This last February, I posted a video about red blood cells and the heart. It was a short little clip that followed several blood cells as they went through the heart, got oxygen, and delivered it to the rest of the body. I'm so blue when I don't have O2. It's time to go to the heart. And right after I posted it, one of my patrons replied that she thought I might like to know that human blood was never blue. Now, before we go further, I want you to consider what you believe about blood and why. Is blood always red? Is it red when it has oxygen, but blue when it doesn't have oxygen? What evidence do you have to support your opinion? And now I'll tell you why I thought blood was blue. When I was a kid, several adults told me that blood was blue without oxygen. I remember a teacher in elementary school saying that if you were bleeding in outer space, your blood would be blue because there wouldn't be any oxygen. The idea of bleeding blue in outer space is super catchy, and I remembered it. And as I grew up, certain things seemed to confirm the idea that blood was blue. I could see my veins, which had a bluish tint to them. I learned that if someone was hypoxic and lacking oxygen, their lips and the beds of their nails would turn bluish. And I saw that babies, if they were born not breathing well, had a dusky or a bluish tint to their skin. And there were those illustrations in anatomy and physiology textbooks. Venous flow was always blue, and arterial flow was always red. All of these things supported the idea that blood was blue when it didn't have oxygen. But several times, I was exposed to a powerful counterexample. When I had blood drawn, it went into a small vial that didn't have any oxygen inside it. And the blood that went directly from my veins into this vial was not blue. It was a dark red. Now, I knew that the vial was vacuumed and had no oxygen, and I knew that the color was dark red. But here's the amazing thing. I did not even notice the contradiction. This is called confirmation bias. When you have an opinion or belief, a lot of times your brain will ignore contradicting evidence, but not consciously. I didn't look at this counterexample and think, that's strange, I've decided I'm going to ignore it. It was a subconscious decision that I didn't even realize I had made. So I thought blood was blue when it didn't have oxygen, right up until one of my patrons made that comment on the Valentine's video. It made me wonder how many other people thought that blood was blue. How widespread was this misconception? So I carried my camera around with me for several weeks and I interviewed as many people as I could. This was a non-scientific, non-random survey, but the results that I got looked something like this. Almost half of the people I interviewed thought that blood was blue, but I also had answers ranging from black to white to brown to purple. I got a huge variety of answers everywhere I went except for one place. At United Blood Services, every single phlebotomist there said that blood without oxygen was dark red or maroon. Phlebotomists work with blood every day, so their opinion has quite a bit of validity when it comes to what color blood is. Here you can see venous blood that has come directly from a vein and gone into a vacuumed vial that had no oxygen. The blood in the collection bag is quite dark in color, but if you look up where the air bubble is, you can see that the blood has a reddish hue. Maroon and burgundy are good descriptions for this color. So this is a really interesting question. Something that almost everybody agrees is a dark red, maroon, burgundy color looks bluish under certain conditions. I found a great answer in a peer-reviewed scientific journal called Applied Optics. In this article, the researchers went into a great amount of detail. They talked about photons, the particles that make up light, and why we perceive colors the way we do. In the article, researchers described how they had tubes of venous blood to represent veins, and then tubes of blood that had 100% oxygen to represent arteries. They put both of these tubes underneath a translucent barrier that was meant to mimic skin, and then they measured the light. And they found that both a vein or an artery will appear blue or turquoise when they are of a certain size and at a certain depth underneath the skin. But if the tubes were smaller than a certain diameter or too deep, they would not appear blue. So this is really cool. If your arteries were close to the surface and big enough, they would look blue too. But your body has a practical design. Arteries are deep inside you and veins are close to the surface because if you cut a vein, you can fix it with a band-aid. Whereas if you cut an artery, you need a tourniquet and maybe surgery. 
It's pretty cool to know that both arteries and veins would look blue under the right conditions, but where does the blue color come from in the first place? Well, remember that white light is made up of all the wavelengths of color. The reason veins can appear blue is because the tissue absorbs more red light, and so the light that's reflected back out has a larger percentage of blue. Again, this is something that only works if the skin is a certain pigment, and the vein is a certain diameter, and it's within a certain distance from the surface. Does this mean that you'll never find blue blood? No. Several animals have blue blood, including Armadillidium vulgare, the potato bug, spiders, octopus, squid, and mollusks. And their blood is blue because they don't use hemoglobin to carry oxygen. They use hemocyanin, which contains copper instead of iron as a binding agent. So there is such a thing as blue blood, but for humans and every other vertebrate, blood is always red. If you enjoyed this video, please share it and subscribe. As always, work hard, grow smart, and I'll see you next time.